from the Jubilee Party, not coalition, and we have a statement that we want to issue on the Huduma or Hujuma number, which will be read by my colleagues here. I think uh, my name is Kemani Shongwa, Member of Parliament for Kikuyu, Member of the Catering Committee of the National Party. And we here standing representing members of Parliament, uh, generally all members of Parliament who are interested in good governance, but specifically members of Parliament from the Jubilee Party have this statement that we are issuing here in Nairobi on this Saturday, 26th of September 2020. And this press statement is on the issue of the ongoing debacle in the issuance of the now very infamous Huduma number. Now, dear Kenyans, we are actually very sad today because as we are just about to reveal, there is a new scheme to steal taxpayers' money and we as members of parliament can no longer watch helplessly. It is unfortunate that the era of culture of primitive acquisition is back with us. As we are about to show you, the entire Huduma card design, procurement and financing is hobbled in deep corruption and kleptomaniac machinations. Those pushing those pushing it on behalf of their secret and powerful masters are projecting their venal appetites and penchant for abuse of office against the great promise of jubilee to the Kenyan people. The public, the public relations statements, the dramatic staging of resignation of Kenyans, shifting... I'll take that again. The public relations statements the dramatic staging of registration of Kenyans, shifting promises, and the long and winding explanations and denials are just a postering justification presented by those who think public office is an opportunity to loot, and of late they have officially sanctioned and become the poster boys of corruption's cancerous nature. We have seen the leader and members of parliament from the former opposition party ODM overzealously defend all the new cases of corruption from the cancer haste to this Huduma one. And we know that this sanitization will continue until well-meaning Kenyans step in to stop this culture of sanitizing corruption. This is the first opposition party in the world to fail in their mandate to check on government. ODM is failing terribly as an opposition party. We shall not, as members of parliament, fail in our duty to point out and speak out against looting of the very resources that we have been mandated by the people to oversight and superintend on their behalf. To them, we say we shall no longer be quiet as they impoverish ordinary hard-working and well-meaning Kenyans as they drive millions out of job and make the life way more harder for business people through outright theft. There is increased speed to steal and pocket taxpayers' money through projects that are not urgent and do not have an impact on the livelihoods and empowerment of ordinary Kenyans who are suffering from a battered economy. Indeed, our priority at the moment should be coming up with robust economic recovery programs and strategies and not rushing to implement unnecessary projects. We would like to ask the following from the Minister of Interior and the National Intelligence Service, NIS. One, what is so urgent about this Huduma number? because this agency is pointing to some curious interests. Why is its procurement being done secretly and not in open, transparent and accountable manner as is demanded by our constitution 
and our procurement laws and why not under the line ministries and departments that are in charge of the process. They would like to ask, what is the rush to pay over 7 billion Kenya shillings to a shadowy foreign company through secret and hidden procurement? We are asking, how did Kenya settle on Malbaga High Tech International, also known as Malbaga ID Services, GMBH? Kenyans, through us, are very keen to know what was Mr. Matthias Carl Kola and Mr. H. Karashani doing with the NIS technical team in Nairobi in a five-star hotel where they had been, they had been holed up for a week between this five-star hotel and the NIS headquarters for a whole week. We are keen to know what is the role of Dr. Mativo of NIS in the implementation of Huduma number? Specifically, what are his duties as, as the Huduma project director? Kenyans want to know who paid for Lufthansa flight costs and consequent VVIP protection and why did the two mercenaries get a dramatic transfer to a five-star hotel upon arrival? To demonstrate the seriousness of the project, the roads were cleared for the economic saboteurs and bandits who have been flown in to complete the fraud and elite bodyguards have been allocated to guard them for the five days for their five day stay in this country. We are asking what was discussed during the Friday 11th September 2020 meeting and the Monday 14th September 2020 meeting. We want to know why is the Huduma project being moved from the Ministry of Interior to NIS. And remember previously, this data collection exercise should have actually been sitting under the Ministry of ICT. Yet, we have new data laws, data laws that these members of parliament have been part of crafting. I sat on the Committee of Information, Communication and Innovation, and I do know very well what these data laws mean to this country. We would like to know why is this Huduma project being moved from the Ministry of Interior to NIS, yet we have new data laws in Kenya that place all data on the shoulders of a data commissioner in a data commission under the Ministry of ICT. We are asking, is this in line with the unfortunate trend of the militarization of Kenyan institutions and is the Ministry of ICT now a ministry or even a department under, uh, under the security organs? Now that the Ministry of Interior has told us that uh, companies involved are 100% Kenyans, which was very curious because no one had even asked, can they publish the CR12 shareholding documents of these companies and make full disclosure on the ownership of this shadowy company, Malba High Tech International. We would also call upon people like the LSK to help us lift the veil to, so that we are able to see who are these individuals behind this very shadowy um, company. The president, we remember last year, directed that the details of all winning companies will always be published and also he directed that the names of the people who own these companies that win these tenders should also be published and their roles and how much they are being paid. The president has previously said that this should happen even for the Kemsa uh, haste. Now, before the theft is done from 15th of October, when the rollout begins, let the Kenyans know who these companies are. Finally, we would like to ask, where is the data for the first Huduma number registration? There's a big question here because the data 
as was collected and stored in the current format is indeed a national security threat. We understand that this is very sensitive data of individuals that is being collected and it is not your usual collection of data. We are talking about bio data. How it is stored becomes an issue of national security concern because anyone who would hack into this data and be able to access it can use it for any malicious use. Now from this, we are asking and demanding the following. Mwishimiwa, kindly take it on from here. Thank you, Mwishimiwa. So I'm, continue, I'm continuing from there. Uh, from the foregoing, we demand the following. The immediate publication of the joint agreement signed between Kenya and Mahalbara High Tech International, the immediate opening up of the secret parcel center site to all members of parliament, the appointees and the data experts for scrutiny. We understand election data is being illegally processed and reorganized here. It should not be lost on Kenyans that during the infamous Lamada meetings, other than the intention of the intention to, other than the intention to assassinate the deputy president, Saitoti style attendees were informed that Huduma number would be used to rig the referendum results for the deep state and the system. The immediate publication of the data from the first registration process, we also demand and expressly caution the NIS not to participate in repaying, in paying out an illegality, Ministry of Interior and ICT should also ensure that does not happen. We would also like to remind all the state officers that it does not matter how long it takes. Those who participate in the illegal payment will be personally charged by the Kenya people for ignoring their warning. We remind all state agents involved of the provisions of the Data Protection Act 2019, Section 26. A data subject has a right to be informed of the use to which their personal data is to be put. To access their personal data is custody of data control data processor. To object to the processing of all of all or part of the of their personal data. So we urge all Kenyans to ignore any calls by those advancing Uduma registration until we get answers to the issues we are raising. Thank you. Kenya <laughs> dhidi ya wa Kenya. Hujuma ya uporaji wa mali ya umma ama pesa zao mesikia takrimu karibu bilioni saba ama zaidi ya bilioni saba pesa taslimu zimepangiwa kulipwa kwa kampuni ambayo inafanywa kichini chini bila kufuata sheria iliyoko ya Public Procurement and Disposal Act ya nchi yetu. La pili imepangiwa ya kuwa ile data ama ile information yote wali chukua kutoka kwa wakenya inatumiwa kwa njia ambayo sio ya kisheria inatumiwa kwa njia ambayo wakenya ambao data yao iko na custody yenyewe wako nayo hawajui inatumiwa kivipi mnakumbuka kuna mabank wakati huduma namba ya kwanza ilipotajwa wale walio shikana na makampuni ya nje kutumia data ya wakenya kufanya biashara 
mpaka wa leo wa Kenya baada ya karibu mwaka mmoja na nusu hajawaambiwa ile data ya huduma namba ya kwanza iko wapi sasa wanatayarishwa kuletewa ya pili na tunataka tuambiwa Kenya sheria ambayo sisi kama wabunge tuliunda bunge ya data data protection act ya 2019 mwaka uliopita section 26 na kama mtanikubalia ni some tena kwa Kiingereza ya kuwa a data subject mkenya ambaye ndiye ndiye data subject ako na haki ya kujulishwa ile data imechukuliwa kwake inatumiwa kwa njia gani na inatumiwa na nani wa Kenya bado hajajulishwa la pili tukasema ya kuwa mkenya ambaye ni subject mwenye amepeana data yake ana uhuru wa ku access their personal data in custody of the data controller or data processor ya kuwa wewe kama mkenya una uhuru chini ya sheria kuweza kuona ile data yako ambayo ulipeana kwa kwa data controller iko wapi imewekwa namna gani inatumiwa vipi na inatumiwa na nani wa Kenya mpaka wa leo hawajaonyeshwa ya tatu yasema mkenya ana uhuru wa kupinga kutumiwa ile data yake kwa njia yoyote ile na inasema kwa kimombo ya kuwa that the subject has a right to object to the processing of all or part of their personal data ya kuwa wa Kenya wanaweza pinga kwa hivyo ndio tuko hapa kama viongozi na kama mnavyojua tunatishwa hata saa hii sababu walijua tumeita kikao na wanahabari yale magari yao ya Subaru yamekuwa yakitufuata wajue tunakuja kusema nini juu ya hii kujuma dhidi ya Kenya lakini tunataka tuwaambie hatutishwi hatutatishika kusema ukweli kunena mambo yalivyo wawe ni deep state wawe ni system fedha sio za system fedha sio za deep state fedha ni pesa za wakenya ile data ni data ya wakenya kwa hivyo wasitishe watu and we want to say and urge kenyans that this is the time to institute civil disobedience against huduma namba because it is your right it is your data it is your personal data walikuja kwangu walikagua na kuhesabu mpaka ngurue na kuku zangu sasa wale wenye mabanki wanafanya nini na ngurue na kuku zangu hiyo data ndio nasikia paso center wanatumia sasa kuiunganisha kuibia wa Kenya hujuma nyingine venye watawaibia hii mambo ya referendum ambayo tunashinikizwa and that is why we have maintained and we continue to maintain our priorities as a country should be economic recovery and how to put back the livelihoods of millions of Kenyans who are out of jobs who have no food millions whose houses were demolished in Kariobangi Kayole their businesses were destroyed in Gikomba those living along the river Nyamakima wale walibomolewa manyumba kwa riverbanks huko Ruai hayo ndio mambo muhimu kwa Kenya hii mbio ambayo mnaona ikisukumiwa hii huduma namba ni mbio ambayo ni mbio ya wizi muliona kemsa covid haste tuliambiwa ni emergency ilikuwa emergency gani na tulijua covid 19 imo ilikuwa uchina kutoka mwezi wa kumi. we were still doing business na serikali ya uchina and the rest of the world tulijua covid 19 yaja hapa lakini lazima ingefanywa hiyo emergency ili wapate nafasi ya uporaji. Hii mbio unaona sasa ni mbio tena ingine ya huduma ile bilioni saba na zaidi ziende. Zile za kwanza zilishaenda. La mwisho. Mheshimiwa Dindi amesema wengi wetu tulitolewa tukangatiliwa kwa makamati za bunge. Sababu mtu kama mheshimiwa KJ because of his professional training ana ujuzi wa mambo ya data processing hawataki watu ambao wana ujuzi kwa kamati za bunge. Mimi mwenyewe mnajua nilitolewa kama mwenyekiti wa kamati ya budget. One of the issues that I stood very firm firmly against is further allocation of resources to huduma number without accountability on what happened to the money that was first allocated to the first process. Na pili ni pesa za referendum. Kuweka mguu chini kusema sio muhimu tukimbilia kufukuza watu na mambo ya referendum watu wako na njaa mm. hayo ndio mambo hawataki yasemwe lakini tumesema tutayasema mfanye chenye mtafanya 
mshike wenye mtashika ile mipango yote mko nayo tunajua hata haya mambo ya hawa mamluki venye walikuja tunajua mahali waliishi kwa hoteli tunajua tumewaambia walikutana na nani siku gani yale waliongea waambie wa Kenya sababu hasla nation iko kila kona ya hiyo kitu wanaita deep state na hizo system zao hasla nation iko humo na wanaendelea kutujulisha na ni wapongeze wa Kenya wote na waendelee kutotishwa na wasikubali hata kidogo data yao itumiwe kuwafanyia hujuma ya kuwaibia pesa ama kuwaibia haki yao ya kuchagua viongozi ambao wanataka ama kupiga kura kwa kura ya maoni venye wanataka asanteni thank you